You want print delivery? Oh, no? Okay, maybe we didn't learn enough about you. And that's the secret, personas and segmentation. Welcome to Pricing Page Teardown where Patrick and Peter break down the pricing pages and strategies of subscription companies from all corners of the market. This week, the New York Times. Founded in 1851, the Print and Digital News Authority is currently doing $400 million in revenue. But does their pricing page live up to the hype? Patrick and Peter, take it away. What's really fascinating about what I think on this page is so discounts, media sponsorships, it's discount, discount, Across discount. the board. You get 50% off an entire year and they're hoping to make up that LTV in the second year. Yep. But it's also because, and this is what's really, really important for media as well as consumer companies, it's a game of essentially segmentation because there's all different types. There's millions of potential customers and they all have different idiosyncrasies. So it's a game of segmentation and they try to cut through a lot of that segmentation through this 50% off. You have this differentiation, particularly when it comes to online, definitely online versus home delivery. Yep. And then the real differentiator is like things like the crossword puzzle, cooking, um, some bonus experience, times experience, exclusive print. So this is like, Anyone who's all in, yep. they're also going to get the print edition. They use these pictographs to kind of compare and contrast. So home delivery, it actually took me a minute before when I started looking at this, like this is home delivery, meaning you actually get the paper. But what I'm really confused about is that essentially like this is their symbol for delivery and I'm not entirely sure, like I didn't know that meant delivery. I also, I love this. So you we see 463 a week. Exactly. My guess is that that balloons pretty quickly as we it go. It does balloon this. pretty quickly. And okay. actually, if we go to get home delivery, all of a sudden you have these choices for choose it just for Sunday, which is 513 per week. Yeah. Notice how we don't have the 460, I don't know where the 463 went. So the other subscriptions, the online subscriptions are per month. month. Yep. This is per week, which it's a little switchy, but it, it worked. It's not being intellectually dishonest. It's it's just kind of tricking the brain a little bit. Oh, that's eighty-one dollars a month normally. We're giving you fifty percent off at forty dollars and fifty cents. That looks very different than the four dollars and sixty pieces. It does, of course, but you're getting it every day now, right? And yeah. they said as low as. So I mean, you can you can essentially sure. we can quibble over the morality of that. I don't think it's immoral. I don't think it's wrong. I think it's just making sure they understand those segments and they use the discounting and promotions properly to get through the door. And then they're very very good about just being straight up where it's hey, after the end of your, your uh, deal, it's gonna jump up to $81 on this date in yep. 2019, and it'll continue until you cancel. This is really good, because there is B2C companies that are not this upfront, and I think it's crystal clear here exactly what's going on. And if we look at the value matrix here, what you'll notice is that print delivery, the willingness to pay is high That's for high. that. Yep. So people who care about print delivery, they're, they're spot on with having that differentiated. Now things like the crossword, not everyone cares about it, but the people who do care about it are willing to pay more. And then these things, which are kind of like the things that they're already including, just having access, no one's really willing to pay more for that on NewYorkTimes.com. That low entry level, we saw that a little bit with the Rent the Runway project, right? Rent the Runway, BarkBox, yep. all of these consumer right. companies are using this, even Spotify. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is that the New York Times has a bigger opportunity for expansion revenue because of the nature of their product. Yeah. You're creating the experience and you're getting more data to identify the persona to then know what to offer that person. Hey, you're all access. You're getting a lot of value, it's awesome. You're yep. paying us eight bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, whatever the, the, the monthly price is. You want print delivery? Oh no, okay, maybe we didn't learn enough about you. And that's the secret, personas and segmentation. One thing that's really cool about the New York Times in particular when it comes to willingness to pay is that usage really, really drives willingness to pay both upward and downward. Mm -hmm. But the daily folks are willing to pay about 50% more. Now the problem and one of the misnomers and one of the problems with consumer and media pricing in particular is that you end up lower common denominator your pricing. You're like, well, I need, I need to get even this, this guy or the gal who's reading it once per right. week, so I need to put my willingness to pay here. In reality, if you understand this data across your usage or across some sort of segment or packaging that you're doing, you wanna make sure that maybe we're just gonna give these people up until they reach this particular level, yep. and then we're gonna attack and go in. But one thing that I would recommend, if you're a media company, if you're a consumer company, even a B2B company, I would really, really recommend understanding that usage metric that is gonna drive value, and then understanding the segments, which we'll talk about in a second, that are really gonna drive value. We looked at the preference of the type of news that the user actually wanted compared to price point. You'll notice is that someone who likes financial news, they're willing to pay about 10% more than the whole group overall. Someone who wants foreign affairs, about 16, 17% higher. 
And then down here, US politics, we're just kind of over it. 13% down. This is where I would start to tease out different packages, special features, things that people can upgrade for. Kind of like, you know, hey, they, they buy foreign affairs or they buy some of these other publications and start to offer it as a separate add-on essentially. But I think that the problem is, is that most people, a percentage of our news, we read across the spectrum. Yeah, in fact, that's interesting because our first episode we did in Netflix, my argument was exactly to do this, right? Documentaries versus action versus Netflix only content. We realized that actually probably wasn't yeah. a good play for And them. if you remember, when we had that situation, you saw similarly yep. anemic splits. Here's where they can start segment. First thing up, Let's look at rural versus metropolitan. So what you're seeing here is essentially rural people, their willingness to pay is very, very, very brought down versus oh, yeah. those individuals who are in a metropolitan area. Further, age. If you're 18 to 34, you grew up in the internet age, you're like, damn papers, who cares? 35 to 54, about seven to ten percent bump, and then all of a sudden fifty-five plus about a twenty percent bump. Yep, I buy that. So if you start to compound some of these things and we cross-reference this data so that this is valid. All of a sudden, if you find a 55-year-old who lives in the metropolitan area looking for the New York Times, you start to see someone who's willing to pay a significant amount more, and you actually have a segment that you can take advantage of versus someone who's 18 in a rural area. And even further, if we look at something like their conservative bent. Here we go. Here's the fun stuff. All of a sudden, you can find someone who identifies themselves as a liberal. They're willing to pay slightly more. Interesting enough, someone who actually defends them, defines themselves as a Democrat, they're willing to pay about 20% more. So a 55-year-old metropolitan Democrat is going to be willing to pay a lot more than a rural 22-year-old Republican. Dynamic pricing. Totally. And this is what's really fascinating about consumer, is that dynamic pricing can actually work. If you have a dynamic enough billing system, you can actually take advantage of a lot of this by starting to create different segments. Yep. Now, the identification of the segments starts to get difficult. But it is one of those things where in particular, you can actually start to identify these users and offer them up the right promotion. A way that you can actually dynamically do that is I can find something that you care about that Dan doesn't care about, and I could put that into a package. Or I can offer you the discount and not offer Dan the particular discount. Uh, let's do takeaways. So a couple of things. One, understand your customer. I know we say that all the time, but it's especially applicable in media and B2C. Um, mainly because you're not going to know those little pockets of growth uh, and you're going to you know, force yourself to be the lowest common denominator when you should be doing segment-based pricing, whether it's actually like airlines and kayak.com, et cetera, who are able to basically figure out the right segment and yep. offer the right package or setting up your packaging in a way where you're not offering those discounts to every single person that reaches the website um, you know, because you can boost your ARPU pretty considerably just with some, some basic intelligence. Second big takeaway, pricing to page design. At least for my opinion, looking at a lot of different websites, especially consumer and media sites that I've looked at, yep. this was very, very tough to figure out what exactly was in what. Um, and I think when you're dealing with such high volume as the New York Times is, thankfully, uh, you wanna reduce that friction as much as possible. And like we talked about, get someone in and then get them on an upgrade path yep. rather than trying to like have them upgrade necessarily right out of the gate if you don't have the data that you need. Yeah, let's do some scores. Okay. So first and foremost, I didn't love the fact that there's too many icons there and I think there's no key and it was super yeah. confusing. I think for the, the older generations who are willing to pay significantly more, they're gonna have more trouble with that. Absolutely. Uh, secondly, I didn't love that they blast have massive 50, like 50% discount right off the yeah, bat. Uh, but I do like visually that they're trying to you know package it up somewhat appropriately. Uh, from a score perspective, you know, I tend to be on the higher scale, but I'd probably give these guys a six and a half or a seven. Yeah, totally. So I'm, I'm on the same wavelength. The, the user experience, when I was talking about design, yep. it's definitely the user experience. That's a, bet, that's a more minute point or a more specific point. I'm, I'm going to be at probably like a 5.9. I'm going to come underneath you because my paradigm, like the data is, is super important to that. The user experience, that's a really quick fix that I think they could do. Again, it's a beautiful page, but the user experience yep. needs to be cleaned up. I think the discounting and the segmentation, I believe they're going to continue to work on and they should work on. The, the last year and a half has just been a bellwether like time for media companies, yep. especially those who cover U.S. politics. And so, I, I just don't want them to squander that. I know we're kind of getting, you know, we're, we're kind of being brought down again by just like so much fatigue based on this stuff. But I think that they can, they can, you know, make a little bit of a comeback by using some of these segmentation pieces. That's all for this week. I'm Patrick Campbell. And I'm Peter Sato. And if you like this episode, make sure you share it with your friends, your colleagues, anyone who thinks is going to get value. We put some clinks there below, and we'll see you next week.